these um, these slides um, will hopefully provide a really brief overview for the first 30 or so pages um, of our primary text textbook. Um, um, the, the title of the slides themselves um, or the actual book, Aging and Addiction. Just a few points for us to remember. Um, primarily for, for any age uh, uh, of the person, addiction is, is certainly not a pleasure. Um, generally speaking, initially, um, drugs, alcohol, um, or, or any substance we use to change our uh, functioning level may actually feel good. We have to acknowledge that. But that feeling tends to dissipate pretty fast, especially when our body starts telling ourselves that we have to use more and more of the same drug to get the same effect. That's, that's when tolerance begins to creep in. And when you meet someone that says they have a really high tolerance for a certain drug or alcohol, um, in society, we, we, we're taught to believe that's a good thing. But actually having a tolerance or, or signs of tolerance is, is a bad thing. It's a danger sign. It's our body telling us that we're using too much of a particular substance. And with older adults, this is even more important. Because the older we become, the, the slower our metabolism generally becomes. And how our body processes medication, drugs, alcohol. Thus, our tolerance levels will be different. And, and someone who, who might be 70, uh, taking a certain milligram of a, a particular medication, uh, might feel more of an effect from that medication than someone who is 30, taking... Um, maybe half the, half the dose. But irregardless, um, the, the issue is quality of life for, 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 for any age, but especially those, those older adults who, who may be suffering from addiction. What is the quality of life like? And, and we all have to believe that as a human right, and regardless of age, we all have the right to have the highest quality of, of living and life that we can. Um, addiction is addiction. It, it really doesn't matter what the drug is, uh, what we call it, if it's alcohol, uh, over the counter prescriptions, or, or the age of the person. The male, female, gender, race, Addiction is an equal opportunity offender and, and really doesn't care who the person is. If you're rich or poor, if you've had lifelong issues, or this is your first time, first issue. It, it doesn't matter. Addiction is addiction. In, in fact, being older may actually make it a, a tad bit worse, to be honest in terms of societal stigma, in terms of how the body responds to the particular drugs, in terms of the additional physical ailments the, the person may already have. You know, you may be addicted to a certain drug and initially still be pretty healthy. But imagine if you're 65 with a heart condition and diabetes um, an addiction sucks in with, with alcohol, for example. How that alcohol consumption will impact the diabetes and the heart disease. It, it will certainly. And, and your book begins to, to talk about that um, and introduce that concept. Um, another thing that addiction does is, is this idea that wrong thinking blocks the right action. Meaning, since addiction is, is, is certainly a disease, but it also impacts, as part of that disease, how we view life, how we make decisions. And those of us who um, have been through addiction or, or had family members uh, that, that, that we care about go through addiction, you might be able to relate to this, that... Um, those individuals we care about, 
may start doing things that's totally outside of their character that they might never do when they were clean and sober. But, but they're suddenly stealing or lying or, or the major goal of the day is, is to find the next um, uh, source of, of the drug or, or just activities that, that might be totally uncharacteristic. Um, and on this, this screen, this slide, we start talking about some of the false beliefs that's associated with addiction of any age, but, but especially with, with older adults. That addiction is a temporary problem, that it comes and goes. Um, technically, no. If you're truly addicted to a substance, then that addiction is a disease that will stay with you um, forever and will create risk factors for you the, your, the rest of your life. That doesn't mean that, of course, it cannot be in, in remission and one cannot be sober for 30, 40 years. Um, had a, had a friend many, many years ago who, who picked up his 50, 50th year chip in AA. He had been clean for 50 years, but he was also the first person to say um, that um, tomorrow I could drink again very easily if I didn't take care of myself and, and, and do what I needed to do to stay sober. There's also ideas that real power with, will ever come, meaning if the person just wants to stop drinking bad enough or using drugs bad enough, then they will. And since they're, and the opposite of that is, well, obviously the person doesn't want to stop drinking or using. If they did, they would. And that's not true either. Um, th this is a complex and complicated disease that looks different for, for every individual, every being, and it's simply not about willpower. Uh, the, the chores to use the first time was not about real power and, and the attempts to, to find sobriety five years later certainly is not about real power uh, another false belief that they're too old to be addicts um, that mom and dad or grandpa is, is just too old to be a alcoholic or to be addicted to, to pain medication or they're too old to even have the risk factor Oh, Grandpa's never used pain medication before. He's 65. The fact that he's using 10 pills a day now doesn't mean anything. Um, he's not at risk for addiction. He's never took drugs before. This is his first pain medicine. And even if he's taking 10 pills a day, that's just him. That's how Grandpa is. Don't worry about him. You know, frequently we, we mislabel addiction for misuse. But in, irregardless, it's, it's misuse. Now, many times in our older, older adult population, we, we, addiction is, is, this, is this spectrum uh, or, or of, of use, misuse, abuse, then dependence. Many of our um, older adults will kind of fall in the middle of misuse and abuse and not necessarily meet the, the classic definition of addiction. But that misuse and, and that abuse uh, of particular drugs, substances, impacts what we talked about a few minutes ago, which is quality of life. Thus, this quality of life issue is, is, is something we, we have to remember. Uh, he or she's too old to get sober is another point. Um, you know, she's 70 years old, let her have her fun. It'll be too hard for her to get sober. She's been drinking for years. Uh, it's just not worth the battle. Well, no one's too old to get sober. Um, and I frequently see this with, with families who have older adults in advanced stage. You know, she's been doing it. He or she's been drinking for years. Let's just let it be. It'll be harder to, to deal with the issue than to let it be especially in terms of family history and dynamics, culture, conversations, and such. Another false belief is you cannot help until the person wants help. That's not true either. Uh, we, we certainly can't force anyone to, to, to find sobriety and, and to, to get clean. But uh, we can share our concerns. And, and generally speaking, Treatment as, is as effective 
with individuals who uh, don't want to be there as it is for those who want to be there. If we understand that treatment is not a magic button, a bullet, there's no such thing as someone going to treatment generally and saying, oh, everything's easy and soft and uh, everything's different. Um, the addiction didn't start that easily and it will not end that easily. Actually, I um, ha- know someone in the community that became addicted to prescription medication that was prescribed legally for, um, for pain and um, it, it became very severe in, in terms of where uh, injections were occurring uh, over various parts of, of the person's body related to um, uh, injecting morphine and, and other extremely strong liquid-based uh, pain medicans, medications. There were some interventions made that the person went to treatment for a couple of months um, at various levels of success. I started Suboxone treatment, which we will talk about, which is a uh, opiate inhibitor uh, that will actually negate the uh, the consequences of, of of pain medication and and, and opiates in, in the body, where the person doesn't feel the effect, uh, and and suddenly the, the person comes back to the community and says, "I'm cured." They took me off. Many of the counselors and the psychologists, psychiatrists took me off Suboxone. I don't need it anymore. Everything's great. All in a span of about three months. And, and the reason I share this story is that's generally not possible. I've seen miracle happens, miracles happen maybe one time in my 16 years in the field of someone saying, I'm done one day, who, who was truly addicted, and, and then not use again for a long period of time. Now, I've known many folks who, who made that decision overnight who were not addicted they were simply misusing or abusing the drugs but there's a difference in misuse abuse and addiction we will talk about but but the moral of the story there is if a if a lifelong problem that was created over a certain period of years exists it simply can't be solved overnight generally or in three months or six months or nine months and usually students say, well, I have this friend that just stopped. They, they stopped using overnight. Well, that's great. My response is generally, well, either it was a miracle or they never met the threshold of addiction and they were misusing or abusing or they were addicted and the risk factors will begin to creep into their lifestyle again and they will use again. And most folks don't want to hear that. Uh, addiction, if there's one thing we can depend on, it's the process of addiction uh, without fail. It's one of the few things in life we can depend on. And, and that's what I want us to talk about this semester is this process of addiction and this, this idea that how this process impacts older adults. Last but not least on the slide, what difference does it make? Let them be happy. Again, we're assuming that addiction creates happiness. Uh, that it's, it doesn't impact quality of life for the older adult. And that's just not true. Um, your book talks about the impact of, of alcohol drugs on the body. And if you want to grow old really, really fast, uh, I'm saying use drugs. Because of how, this, how drugs and alcohol impacts the, the body and the physical circumstance of the person, regardless of age, but especially for older adults. Um, when older adults tend to have more heart and circulatory blood problems, um, it certainly impacts cognitive processing. Most people think you know, losing your, your memory and cognitive processing is part of getting older. To a point, sometimes it is, but generally it is not. But what we do see with older adults at, at very fast clips and rates is older adults that drink alcohol, use certain drugs such as opiates, um, short-term memory tends to, uh, to dissipate pretty fast, the ability to problem solve dissipates extremely fast. So sometimes 
and it's frequently, especially if, if our older adults are on certain levels of medication, it's the medication that's impacting cognitive thought and, and quality of life more than the actual aging process, which is a side effect of this, this medication culture that we have. Um, of course, alcohol impacts sugar levels, especially th those with diabetes and actually create diabetic states. I've actually had, had many clients who, who, who were diabetic, who were severe alcoholics, and, and the message from their physicians were quit drinking or die, and, and many were unable to, to reduce or, or, or stop drinking, and, and, and they passed. Um, um, you can almost have also a, a diabetic or alcohol-infused diabetic state where it almost appears as if the older adult has diabetes and have, has some of the symptoms of diabetes, but it's a result of the alcohol consumption. Of course, the list goes on and on. Kidney, bladder, liver, bones, um, and alcohol, drugs impact uh, the body of all users, but multiply the impact um, of the older adult by, by 10 times because the older body is, is more fragile, fragile than someone who is 20. Of course, the family we, we can't forget about. Uh, use never impacts just the user. It impacts the entire family. Families must cope. A codependency begins to occur. That uh, my happiness uh, as the husband is dependent upon my wife's happiness. And the only time she's happy is when she's drinking. Thus, in order to make sure she's happy, I supply the alcohol and that fulfills my own personal needs. Um, people frequently change and disappear in front of our eyes. That change and disappear, disappearance act sometimes happens overnight, but frequently it happens over a period of days, weeks, months, and years, and we begin to accept or think that this disappearing act is normal. We begin to, to have trouble remembering when things were not like they are. And, of course, trust within the family dynamic is, is distorted. Um, another issue when helping becomes hurting. Um, many folks, again, if we go back to the prior slides, just let Grandma be like she is. She doesn't have much longer to hear to be with us. It seems to make her happy and that type of thing. Um, again, uh, addiction is not happiness. Um, and when we help other individuals or loved ones to get high, when we ignore the problem, when we think the just placating the, the other person is the answer, then it, it, it's not. Um, that's just preserving the problem, and it's, and it's ignoring the circumstance. And, and that's it for these slides. Um, hope that, again, this was a, a really short overview of, of the reading assignment for, for last lesson that I wanted to, uh, for us to go through before we move on.